Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an interesting curvy circular pattern in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to show you how you can create this interesting pattern in Illustrator with or without these little floral elements in the design. Now the design actually came from a Kleenex tissue box and it's called a hopscotch pattern. And I was looking at it and thinking, hmm, I wonder how you'd do that in Illustrator. Well, I've worked out how to do it in Illustrator and I'm going to show you how to make this pattern now. So we're going to start with a brand new document. Just going to choose File and then New and we'll just make a 1000 by 1000 pixel document. You can make yours whatever size that you like. And I'm going to start out by creating a circle. So I'm going to click on the ellipse tool and just click in the middle of my workspace and make a circle 200 by 200 points in size. And now I'm going to increase the stroke weight to around 10 points and make it a white stroke. Now none of these settings are set in concrete. So if you want a wider stroke or a different size circle, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to find my swatches which have gone for a bit of a walk here and I'm going to color the middle of this shape a green color. I'm going to select the selection tool and I'm going to hold the alt key as I drag away three more copies of this circle because I need four different colored circles. And I'm going to color each of these a different color. And now I'm going to position them to do that, I'm going to start out with this circle. I'm going to position everything relative to the green. So what I'm looking to do is to make sure that the dark green circle lines up with the anchors on the very edge of this lighter green circle. Now if you find that the other circles get in the way while you work, just turn their visibility off and then you can't see them and Illustrator is only going to line everything up relative to the objects that are actually on the screen at the moment. Now things aren't lining up particularly well for me right now. I'm just going to make sure that I have both shapes selected as I move this one into position. So it's now in position and I can hide it. Let's bring back one of the pink ones. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to move this one into position. Again trying to align it exactly to these intersecting points on the other circle. Now I want to see all these circles right now when I bring in the last one because the last one has to be added relative to both of these. I want it to intersect exactly here. So this is the shape I'm going to start working with. I'm going to select all these pieces and from the Pathfinder, which I can get to by choosing Window and then Pathfinder, I'm going to click this option which is Divide. And what it does is divides everything up into its component pieces. With this selected, I'm going to choose Object Ungroup because I want to be able to break these pieces apart. And the pieces that I don't want are these middle ones. We don't need those because they're not actually part of the pattern. So I'm just going to move those out of the way. These are the pieces we do need, but they don't look really yet quite the way they should. So I'm going to select the bottom and the top one independently of each other and I'm just going to rotate it round 180 degrees. And to do that with it selected, I'm going to hold my mouse pointer out here till I see the arrows and I'm going to hold the shift key as I rotate it because that constrains it to a multiple of 45 degrees and 180 degrees is just four stops around there. So this is the basis of my pattern. I'm going to select the object and choose Object, Pattern, Make. Now this is the default pattern option in Illustrator which is a grid, but I don't want a grid, I want brick by row. So I'm going to select brick by row and I want these offset by a half because you can see that if I move these up into this space, it's all going to fit really nicely together. 
So now I'm going to break this apart here because I want to be able to adjust the height manually. I'm just going to start decreasing the height value to bring these shapes closer together. I can do that using the arrow key, but if I use the arrow with the shift key, it just happens much faster. So I'm going to move these into position so that I'm creating my pattern. And I'm just keeping an eye out on everything that's happening around here just to make sure that there's nothing going wrong with my pattern. If you need to, you can add even more overlap so that you can double check everything as you work. So I'm looking to make sure that these lines are working properly. I think they're out a little bit, but I think that I can control that by adjusting the width. So I want these lines to flow through my pattern seamlessly. I don't want them to be offset. I'm just checking them here, but they're looking all pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that pattern and I'm willing now to say that I'm done. So I'll click done. Illustrator has now added my pattern to the swatches dialog so I can move this piece out of the way because I don't need it any longer. I'm going to create a rectangle the size of an artboard. I have a script that does that for me, but if you want to, you can draw your own rectangle the size of the artboard or you can go and view my video on scripting in Illustrator that shows you how to do it because I think it's a really, really handy technique or a handy script to have. It saves me a lot of time. Now I've just clicked the fill option here. I've got my rectangle selected here and I'm going to fill it with my new pattern. And now let's size the pattern down. So let's choose object, transform, scale. I don't want to scale my object, so I'm going to disable this, but I do want to scale my pattern. And we can see the pattern at work. We can scale it as big or as small as we like. I'm going to click OK. Now the original pattern that I showed you was a little bit different to this. So let's hide this and let's bring back the pattern that we were working on. So I'm just going to bring back this pattern piece. And it had a little flower in it and I created the flower from the leftover pieces that I had. So let's just go and grab these pieces and I'm just going to scale them by holding the shift key as I size them down to a smaller size. And this is making my little floral element. I'm just going to send this object back, so I'm going to choose Object Arrange Center Back because I want to bring my flower to the front. And my leaves are a little bit different sizes. You could make yours the same size or different sizes as you prefer. I'm just going to quickly try and make those as close to each other as I can. I'm going to click on the Ellipse tool and draw a very small ellipse and fill it with one of the colors from my pattern, which is probably going to be this green color here. And then just move it into position. So I've got my little flower inside my pattern. Again, I can just do object pattern make. And now I can just start reducing these heights to bring these pattern pieces in together. So this time the pattern has a small flower in it, which it didn't have previously. We would use the same pattern settings here as we used in the previous pattern because there's nothing different about our pattern except that we just added a little flower into it. If I'm happy with this pattern, and for now I'm just going to call that good, I'm going to click Done. Let's take these pieces out of the way. We're going to make another rectangle the size of our artboard. I'm going to click on the rectangle. That's it here. I'm going to make sure I have fill selected. I'm going to drop my new pattern into it. The new pattern is always the one that is the furthest along in the swatches palette. With this selected, let's just resize it so we can see what it's going to look like. Again, we don't want to change the size of the object that it's in. We just want to change the size of the pattern so we can see how it's going to look repeated at a smaller size. 
So there's an interesting pattern swatch that you can create in Illustrator. It's a little bit different to the traditional patterns that we've been doing and that I've been showing you how to do, but it's another one to add to your Illustrator toolkit. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this Illustrator video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here at YouTube and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.